All right, what's going on, you guys? <clears throat> it's your boy, 360 Stacks in this thing, baby, representing TKOG. Today, I'm going to be showcasing you guys my take on virtual worlds. Um, so before I get deeper into the video, I would like to say if you are already watching my videos, pretty much every time I upload them, let's just go ahead and do both of us a solid. Subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so that you never, ever miss out or don't be too late to the party, right? Um, and if you want to support my channel, if you're just feeling generous, so you're like, hey, you know what? I want to help this guy out. I want to see his channel blow up. I want him to have like, you know, the best setup, get like really, really nice equipment. Uh, you can donate. <clears throat> the best way to do that is honestly through Patreon. Uh, there's tier one, two, and three. You'll be set up. when If you do become a member of Patreon, I recommend you basically linking your uh, Patreon to the Discord. That's the next thing I was going to say. Join the Discord. It's a really awesome community. No one's toxic in there. It's one of my favorite communities, personally, is my own Discord. Because I go to Facebook groups. Like, let's say it's like a a Shadal group or like a Endymion Duelist group. A lot of those groups have very, very toxic people and <clears throat> like very entitled people and people who think they know it all. And when you ask for help in those kind of groups, normally they don't help you. They just tell you your deck is bad and they tell you to get better. Or they'll just say stuff like, they'll pretty much just shoot down all your ideas and they'll act like their idea is the best one and nobody else is right but them. You will have a lot of people with those attitudes in those groups, but not in my Discord. That's why I recommend, even if you don't want to donate <clears throat> or become a member of Patreon, do join the Discord because it's an awesome community with really good people. It's a chill and laid back environment. You can meet people to bounce ideas off of, to get better, to learn more from. If you just want to have duels with people, like you can really learn a lot from just being in the Discord, not just from me, from everybody in there. Like I personally learn from people in the Discord. And also even when it comes down to um, the Patreon tiers, like examples are like, in my tiers one, uh, two, and three, like I've met some people in there that actually taught me something. Like this one dude put me on a light fairy that I didn't even know exist. That was pretty much like a vanity's emptiness. And had I not been doing like the tutoring sessions, like I wouldn't know. So it's not just like I'm gonna be teaching you guys. I still learn uh, from people in the Patreon, but it's Patreon exclusive content. So if you want that, if you want the personal one-on-one -on -one time with me, uh, if you wanna have like me break a deck for you, or if you wanna get um, an actual like remote duel or DB duel with me, uh, if you want help with learning your deck, like you can ask people in there, <clears throat> they'll tell you like it's worth it, honestly, at the end of the day, because I'm doing the way I have it set up is nobody else is getting it except for the people in Patreon. That includes my side decks and my theory crafting behind side decking in the first place. But with all that said, <clears throat> yeah, let's get into this. Uh, Virtual Worlds are a really awesome deck. Um, there is a learning curve to them. Believe it or not, you guys, there's over 80 combos. Over 80 combos that you can do with Virtual Worlds. I don't, there's very few decks that I know, even combo decks that have like over 30 combos. Like there's a lot you can do with this deck. The same hand can make multiple different in boards. Uh, because so many extra deck cards are generic, there are just multiple combos that you can do. There's a lot of stuff that can get a bit degenerate. Some stuff's more fair than others. Um, but at the end of the day, this deck is really big on pumping out the same board endlessly. You can actually recycle anything. Even your own extra deck, like let's say like you had like made a Kaliga and <clears throat> you know it died. You can actually recycle the cards that both make Kaliga and the cards that um make the uh, the muddy dragon as obviously. Like you can literally recycle your whole extra deck with this deck because of how Nyan Yan and Shin Shin work. You can just Shin Shin banish them and Nyan Yan put them back. So this deck actually can infinitely grind. From its extra deck and its main deck not very many decks have that kind of utility um and also that level of sustain it's a good sustain because it's not like you're plusing every turn you're just getting the same amount of resources every turn shin shin coming back quinn long from grave gg added back on in phase from the last turn just giving you really solid follow-ups uh this deck is just going to be able to grind for eternity it's it's really really strong um some of my favorite boards right now are <clears throat> kaliga crystal wings shin shin and chuche um, I ain't gonna lie, Shin Shin and Chuche, just half of that board can beat most of the meta right now. Believe it or not, Shin Shin's been putting in a lot of work. It's really hard for a lot of decks to play around Shin Shin, especially when it comes to Prank Kids and Shadals. And Dragon Links really struggle when all their cards are going sit from the field to the grave because they can't just summon Savage and, you know, have a negate. There's not gonna be any links that go to their graveyard. And it's really hard for them to fuel their grave for Levianir to pop the Shin Shin because everything that goes from their field to the grave is being banished. So like unless they open Dark Roller, it's nearly impossible for them to deal with just Shin Shin and Chuche alone. Because normally Chuche is going to be used in a defensive manner that protects your Shin Shin in the first place. So believe it or not, you don't have to make the biggest, scariest board <coughs> to win with this deck. You just need to know how to play past turn one and two. Like I could say that about any deck, like most people will pick a deck up and they'll know the basic combos, but... 
You can tell that they don't really know the deck well after turn two and three. The plays that they're making normally determines whether or not they know what they're doing at that point. So as long as you can get that far with this deck and you, you've played it long enough, it's a really skillful deck with the high learning curve and it's really fun. You're going to enjoy it a lot. This is a very great deck to play. Um, it's very unique in itself as well. So let's get started. Uh, we have three copies of Lulu. Uh, we have three copies of Lili. These are the only virtual worlds that you can reveal targeting any virtual world card and combo with. Whether it's Chuche, whether it's Jean Wu, whether it's Quinlong, whether it's any virtual world monster. These are the only ones that can allow you to combo. You can almost full combo with just like Lili targeting Gigi or Nyan Nyan, anything like that. And obviously Lulu, just every almost every two card combo is the best when you have Lulu. Uh, in your hand so it's really really strong like your combo is really strong because you get a lot for so little <laughs> my biggest issue with this deck is just the consistency issue um and, but everybody playing virtual world understands that and that's why you want to play um certain staples like pot of desires and prosperity and foolish burial goods to make your your hands a lot more playable more often than not and then we have three copies of gg and also uh three copies of lala and finally finishing up the names with i'm playing two nian yan i do not play two two I've never been in a situation where I'm like, dang, I wish I had 2-2. I played it, and I took it out, and I have not needed it. It's never came up to a point where it's like, dang, I wish I had 2-2. I'm going to put it back in. El best case scenario, it's a name that you can normal summon, and if you have a random psychic to pitch, it's like an extender. But, like, you already discard two cards typically every single turn. That's a, a lot to do, you know, especially when you want to normally keep some cards in your hand to play for your next turn. Uh, the other thing, too, is, like, there was just no combos that I was like, dang, I need 2-2 for this combo. So that's why I ended up just taking it out. It's a great card, nothing wrong with it, but I'm trying to minimize on certain cards that are, um, and pretty much maximize on my um, utility cards, my hand traps, and my cards that are going to unbreak my hands. Um, so these are the 14 names. <clears throat> uh, obviously, ideally, Lao Lao is the last name you want to reveal. Um, and GG, obviously, you want to make sure that you resolve this every turn because that's follow-up number one. Follow-up number two is Quinlong. Follow-up number three is going to be Shin Shin. And follow-up number four is when you're banishing Zhuang Wu. And then in your when your hand's really good, you can banish it, recycle it, and then dump it again. So you're literally, your next turn, you're going to have Shin Shin engraved, Zhuang Wu engraved, Quinlong engraved, and then the end phase add off of GG. And you can just play from your graveyard. It's just crazy how well this deck grinds. But yeah, ideally, most of your two-card combos <clears throat> are going to come from Lili and Lulu. Uh, those are the most ideal. Uh, next up, we're going to go into actually my defensive cards. Um, but yeah, this deck, like I said, it just makes amazing boards. Even the boards that don't look scary are really, really powerful. Like just Shin Shin alone, normally it's backed with a Chuche, is really good. And the fact that this deck has Access to Quinlong, a main deck out to Winda, a main deck way to force Savage or force um, <clears throat> Hot Red. They try to negate it. Uh, you chain Gamma. Like, it's just crazy how powerful this deck is going first or going second. If it was more consistent, like, if you had one more virtual world name that was like Lulu, Lili, Gigi, and Lao Lao, and you had 15 of those, this deck would be, honestly, I look at this deck like a tier 1.5 deck right now. This deck would actually be nutty. Uh, but, yeah, it's really crazy going first or second. Uh, you can out so many different boards without drawing any hand traps, just using your actual virtual world cards. It's amazing. Uh, we have three Ash and uh, three Gamma. As far as hand traps goes, these are the best ones to play. The reason being is because <clears throat> whether you're resolving these or not, these are actually combo pieces. Like Driver is actually a combo piece. Uh, when you resolve Gamma into Driver, you're protecting your virtual world cards, uh, your names in hand. Also, just the sheer presence of this in your main deck will make people not want to ash you when you reveal Lulu targeting the, um, the, the, the Chuche. And that's like a really good point to start. It's like if they don't ash that, when they ash later, you're normally going to be able to play through it a lot easier versus when you only had Lulu to reveal in the first place. So Gamma, protect your plays. Um, it's an amazing hand trap. Obviously, you want to Gamma the Alistair. It's amazing against Dragon Link. <clears throat> and the thing with Ash is like, the thing with both of these is these are tuners, so they're searchable off Chao Fang. Uh, you can put in work with Chao Feng, and if he's not putting in enough work, uh, you just pop him with Chuche and add the hand trap of your choice. Um, Ash is also a combo piece because it's a level 3 and a tuner. It's amazing. So even though most decks, I would say, <clears throat> don't play hand traps because Dark Ruler Droplets and, you know, Zoo King Alpha, for example, are just better cards for breaking boards and not having a, like, risk to RNG of, like, whether you draw the hand trap as your six card or whether they play through it or not. But the thing is, like, these are combo pieces and they're searchable. So it's a lot better to play them in a deck like this. 
Um, I just personally feel that way. I love that these are synergistic in the sense that they're searchable, they're recyclable, they're searchable off Chao Fang, they're recyclable off of Vermilion Dragon Mech, and they're also combo pieces when you use them. So it's just too much utility to pass up on, in my opinion. And then I'm playing three copies of Mystic Mine. Um, I like how this deck plays Mystic Mine. It grinds extremely well. Whenever you want Mystic Mine gone, you pop it with your own Chuche and you could just keep playing. Um, it makes this deck really, really powerful, really oppressive. Um, because a lot of the times, all you're going to do is just build a small board under Mystic Mine. And once you get a negate or two up under the Mystic Mine, especially against these bigger boards, um, you can normally just either force them to out your own Mystic Mine or out your own Mystic Mine because your board's strong enough to contend with them. Like, let's say, like, you're on, like, a Dragoon, like a Dragoon, because I don't have Dragoon, I have um, Kaliga. Like, when you make Dragoon and you have, like, Crystal Wing, you could just be like, all right, buy Mystic Mine, because you have the Negators up now. So you can use it in that regard. You can use it defensively, just in case you brick. You can also use it just in the sense that, like, literally people will scoop if they don't have a main deck out. They'll scoop. I think this card is really powerful. Um, pretty much every format except FTK formats, Mystic Mine is going to be insane. And this deck plays it extremely well. So those are my nine defensive cards. Next up, for uh, more consistency, uh, we're playing three copies of goods. It's either a starter or an extender. If you already had Quinlong, you dump Joan Wu. If you already had Zhang Wu, you dump Chuche. It's just such a utility. And I only have two pots. I had the third, but I got the, the third one a while back, got rid of it, and now I'm about to sell these two today as well. So I would be playing a playset. <clears throat> There's no real drawbacks from this. Everything you banish in this deck can be recycled off Nyan Yan, and Nyan Yan can be recycled off of Chuche. So you have an infinite grind. You can recycle your extra deck, recycle your main deck, and you just don't run out of resources. You just can't be decked out as long as you know what you're doing. Uh, and then next up, we're playing uh, three copies of Kowloon. And yes, I chose Prosperity over Desires, in case anyone's going to ask, because Desires forces you to change the composition of your main deck. I do not like playing two ofs that are super vital to have, especially when you're using both copies. Like, you're using Chuche's Graveyard Effect and you're gonna activate one from your deck typically. So, when you desires and just banish one of them, it already makes things more difficult. So, unless you're gonna like, rely on RNG every time you resolve desires and just pray to God that you either got the Chuches out your deck or they don't get banished, I don't recommend desires, especially with my list playing two Nyan Nyan. It's, it's gonna hurt sometimes. It's gonna hurt to the point where you can't really play. That's why I liked Prosperity better, and I'm just gonna do three Prosperity instead of uh, Desires. Uh, Kowloon is obviously insane. Going first and going second, this is your Alta Winda. This forces Borlode Savage. This also can force Zeus, uh, which is super duper nutty, because Zeus is either gonna use his effect or and leave a, uh, and, like, leave a resource for you to search, or he's just gonna let it resolve and be negated, and now you have a virtual name to target and reveal your guys in hand. So. This card is very, very nutty. Honestly, Kowloon is broken. Um, and then finishing up the spells, we have three copies of Quinlong. This card is insane, you guys, going first or second. When you um, pair this with the Gamma, like let's say you open this, this, and Gamma, you can completely shatter the um, the Dragon Link board. Uh, just literally just by forcing those negates out, Chute popping, Full Sparrow Goods dump something, or reveal a name in hand, dump something, chain Gamma to negate their negator. It's really good. Like honestly, Quinlong is insane, you guys. It's such a great card. And then for the last one, of, as far as spell goes, we play one call by and one e -Telly. Um, These are just utility cards. e helps you to play through Nib, believe it or not. And then also call by is just, it's call by. It's insane against Dinos. It's insane against Shadows. It's really good against everything, honestly, including hand traps. And then for the traps, I'm playing two Chuche and one John Wu. <clears throat> like I said earlier in the video, typically, if you can afford to, your hands will be leaving a John Wu engrave, a Quinlong engrave. <sighs> And you're going to have Chuche, uh, which is going to be obviously just like making sure that everything you banish gets recycled back. So like your resource loop is going to come from this setup right here, keeping these engraved. GG adding off of Graveyard from in, during in phase, like adding your Lulu or your Lao Lao back. And then Shin Shin being up. That's why you should prioritize Shin Shin. The reason being is even though you might say, if I make Shin Shin, I can't get another in the gate. Don't be greedy. Think about your next turn. Always be cognizant of your next turn. Um, and make sure that you're able to play past turn two. That's what you should always do. So when you make this, this guarantees a follow-up. Uh, it's really, really good to have Shin Shin in rotation with these guys being dumped in grave for your next turn. Because your next turn, like if your board gets broken, this is coming out, this is searching, this is bringing something else out. Even if you don't have any cards in hand. Um, like any like follow-up, for example. Just like random discards that you drew, for example. Um, these are going to help you out a lot. This also pairs extremely well with Nyan Yan because you can Shin Shin, banish any of your extra deck cards from the grave, and then use Nyan Yan to recycle them back. So that's why this deck only needs one copy of Zeus, even though I don't have Zeus right now because, like, Hani Juari has been taking two months to send me my Zeus. Um, but you can just banish the Zeus off of Shin Shin and then recycle it with Nyan Yan and then Zeus your opponent again. 
Um, so it's just really, really important. Make sure that you're always prioritizing Shin Shin. If you could pick between Shin Shin and Crystal Ling, always pick Shin Shin. I know it sounds crazy. Some people be like, but I want to negate. Like, no, bro. It's super important. Trust me. It's, it's always going to pay off. Now for the, um, <clears throat> the extra deck we have. Ultimate Zulkin, and then we also have the most important card in the extra deck, Shin Shin, Vermilion Dragon Mech. Chao Feng is like a flex spot, since right now I don't have Fortune Tune or Zeus. I've been trying not to press Hani over it. I've been just like, you know, asking them, like, I know you're busy, bro, but like, I won the tournament in March in Luxury Gaming for the Zeus. We're in May. You keep saying, my bad, I'm busy, but it's like, bro, it's been two months. I'm trying so hard not to press him uh, and be understanding. But anyways, we have these. Uh, Chao Feng, like I said, is a flex spot. Um, it's pretty good against Earth-based decks, um, but the beauty of this is also in your main combos, you can actually just pop this and search any hand trap you want. It's really nice when you already have the room, uh, pretty much like when you have everything you need. This is just like another free plus to make your boards more nutty than they already are. Helps to play around Dark Brother because you'll have a hand trap to back your board up. Uh, one Claw Castle, I like just keeping one even though I'm not doing the hand looping variant. Um, Cloud Castle bringing back Vermilion is insane. It's really, really nutty. Vermilion is just crazy against back row decks and other slower, like mid range decks. And then for um, the Zulkin target, we're playing one copy of Crystalline. We have Muddy. These are ideally what you're using almost every first turn combo. After that, your combos are normally going to be different, but these are just your go tos the Shin Shin, and also the Kaliga. Obviously, this is like a package right here. You're normally making these first turn. I personally, even though I don't have Dragoon, I still wouldn't pick. Dragoon over Kaliga. I think Kaliga is a better card. I think that Shadows just can't beat this. Prank Kids just can't beat this. Dragon Link just cannot beat this. Dinosaurs just cannot beat this. Um, Ogdoatics can't beat this. Or Sarkdis cannot beat this. Really, Eldritch is probably one of the few decks that mainly can because they can use one monster effect to get over this, maybe. And then there's like possibly um, Zodiacs just, you know, summon Dryden Pop. But the thing is, you guys have to realize, you're summoning Crystal Wing and Kaliga, and you have Chuche and Shin Shin. So, like, you're banishing all their cards from field. Chuche, if they even declare an attack, like, as their one attack to get over Kaliga, you Chuche to pop the one they declared an attack on, and that's their one attack that they use. So, like, Chuche and Kaliga is really strong. The fact that they get one monster effect and you negate it with Crystal Wing, it makes it, like, true king of all Chlamydia. You can't attack, you can't activate monster effects. So, it's like VFD all over again, basically. That's why I like this setup better than Dragoon. It's going to win more duels um, than you believe. Trust me. It's a lot better than Dragoon. I know Dragoon's like, Omni negate people will just argue with me, but trust me when I say Kaliga wins more duels than Dragoon does. Uh, we have Juju. Coral Dragon and Stardust Charge for your sixes. Honestly, I don't want to cut any of these. These are super important. And then we have the Sacred Tree. We have Inner Blathenir. This card is very, very nutty. Um, M7 is very, very powerful in this deck. Adding back your hand traps and your resources, it makes a nice Zeus as well. In the meantime, because I don't have a uh, Fortune Tune. And I love Fan Fan. This card is very, very underrated. Um, especially his actual effect when he dies. He's pretty broken, honestly. And that is going to conclude my Virtual World deck profile, you guys. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully, you learned from it. Um, honestly, if you guys want to see this deck in action, I don't mind showing you guys some um, duels with it online. Um, I've been torn between playing this or Metal Foes at Locals or even Ogdowatic. I'm just pretty torn right now because there's so many decks I want to try. Like, I've been playing Shadals and Dragon Maids for so long. It's like I want to try something new and just have fun with it. But with all that said, um, make good choices. Don't hurt your brain cells. Stay tuned for future content. Jesus loves you. And I'm going to say a quick prayer and we'll be out. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Lord Jesus Christ. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. Please give us this day our daily bread, Lord Jesus, and please forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, Father, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the glory, and the power forever. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Father. Amen. All right, you guys, with all that said, I'm out.